Hello, welcome to Health and Care. I'm Dr. Adam Fields. I'm a chiropractor, and I caught up with John Cancellino, who is meeting with researchers and medical doctors and chiropractors, physiotherapists about shockwave therapy. It's something I do in my office. It helps a wide range of things, and I'm excited about sharing with you some of the possibilities with this technology and some of the bleeding edge new things that are happening out there. John has been an incredible athlete his, his life. He's five foot 10, 200 pounds, very little body fat. Uh, in the middle of all of his travels, he's been setting some time aside here in a hotel room to meet with us and give us some of the science on shockwave therapy. John, I'm thrilled to have you. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me. That's All a pleasure. right. A pleasure. So I want you to share with us. I mean, I know a lot and I'm in the trenches just working with people uh, with their issues, with their plantar fasciitis, their tennis elbow, all this stuff. Uh, tell us a little bit about how you got into this. Yeah. So um, I actually uh, was going to seminars, uh, selling different medical devices, and I uh, came in contact with a colleague. Both of us know Joe Lemon and uh, he's worked for Elevation and was uh had the piezo wave there and um me being an athlete uh most all my life i uh, had a lot of injuries a lot of issues that i needed to be corrected myself mm -hmm. and uh, just uh just one treatment on uh, a shoulder uh, surgery that i had in 2012 uh it helped alleviate a lot of the pressure and pain mm -hmm. and increase the range of motion and same thing uh with uh, trigger finger uh, i had some issues with that i was getting ready to get some surgery and get that released and uh, just a couple of treatments made a significant difference for me. So it was easy for me to understand that the technology works and how well it works and why I wanted to be part of the part of the, the company and the process of getting it, getting the word out there. Mm -hmm. I love it. So um, you actually know a little bit about the history of it. Also, I know I know Shockwave started with kidney stones, right? So um, I, I actually had the pleasure of going to Germany and training under the manufacturer Richard Wolf in Germany and also training under our companies, ex, uh, us being the exclusive distributors of the PA's wave worldwide. Our corporate headquarters is in Germany and then our local headquarters in the US is in uh, Alfreda, Georgia. And I got to train under our DPT, which trains uh, all, of our, um, all of our distributors around the world, but also does our training videos for us. Mm -hmm. And then I got to train other manufacturers. So I got to find out exactly how, uh, how Shockwave came about and uh, like you said, it, it did start with uh, with lithotripsy, breaking up kidney stones. They were finding when they're doing treatments for kidney stones that patients were feeling better. Their hips and their backs were feeling better, less pain. And they found mm. out that the sound they were traveling through to get to the kidney stone was inadvertently breaking up these lesions and scar tissues that were causing pain. Oh, I love it. It's a happy accident, right? Exactly. And, yeah. and then it started. And then we went from there into we went to musculoskeletal things. And yeah, we so started, it, it's, it's been good with the uh, podiatrist, right? Podiatrist, yeah. So that was really what brought it to the U.S. market was the uh, podiatry side. So they used to have a machine called Ocitron, which was a really large machine, wasn't mobile. They would sedate patients um, and they would actually treat their plantar fasciitis, heel spurs, things like that. Um, and they would be recovering, you know, several weeks because it was such a high amount of energy. Whoa. Um, then they found out that you don't have to deliver that much energy to work on, you know, myofascial soft tissue injuries. And then they lowered the energy and made it more focused, uh, in our case, the piezo wave. Um, so it, it, uh, it's more focused, uh, for, for soft tissue injuries now. Right. I mean, breaking up a kidney stone is a lot different than breaking up a little scar tissue on your plantar fascia. Yeah. It's right. a lot more precise, uh, and, and a lot more care involved, a lot more depth as well. Right. Right. And then, uh, we start, and then I think in 2003, it was the FDA uh, approved it for plantar fasciitis. And then it went into lateral epicondylitis, which is tennis elbow. And then we got into cardiovascular things, right? Because shockwave increases angiogenesis. So they're using it, cardi cardiologists now are using it on the heart. They can use it and break up plaque buildup. Mm -hmm. um, they're doing a lot of research in Germany on several, they're off-label uses here in the US as of now, but you'll probably be seeing in the next few years, a lot of creative new um, treatments for everything from um, breaking a plaque in arteries to treating uh, early onset dementia and Alzheimer's with um, treating these dormant brain cells with uh, focused acoustic wave therapy, stimulating mm -hmm. them, increasing growth, uh, growth factors in these areas and getting some fresh oxygenated, healthy blood in those areas. It's incredible. So yeah. 
I think, you know, also we're getting angiogenesis. We're not just getting plucking of the art. We're getting actually new blood vessel proliferation, right? And from what I, what I gather, you're getting a cell is actually when the wave comes in, the sound wave, which is traveling at, I think it's like 1500 meters per second, right? It's faster yeah. than the sound, the speed of sound. Yes, the speed of sound, yep. And then right. we, uh, we incorporate the amount of pulses per second, which causes this compression and manipulation on these on this um, dysfunctional, non-pliable tissue. Mm. On the scar tissue. On the scar tissue, yep. Right. And as far as like uh, the androgenesis portion that you're saying, it, it has a cascade of effects in the stimulating the, um, the growth factors in those areas to help regenerate new cells. Uh, and there's a lot of research showing how um, focus shockwave will actually help growth factors and cell production um, stem cells, natural production of stem cells. And that kind of the new U.S. Um, introduction is going to be in this in the health and wellness side of it, um, working in uh, conjunction with um, other uh, biologics such as um, exosomes and stem cells. Mm -hmm. using in conjunction. Stimulate right. Natu yes. Stimulate the natural uh, production. And then they do their injections or biologics and they're finding that they're absorbing better in those areas mm. and the, uh, the treatments are, are working better as well. Amazing. So you, yeah. you, I, I, from what I understand, you're getting like a, you're getting a compression of the cell, right? You're getting the, the, the heart, you're getting a wave that goes through the hard tissue, the scar tissue breaks up, but the other cells, right. you're getting a compression and a decompression. There's mechanical receptors on the outside of that cell that actually then turn into biomechanical cascades of, of changes within the cell. You're getting Correct. nitric oxide, which which dilates. Um, nitric dilates. oxide is, in fact, nitric oxide is one of the, the drugs that they use for erectile dysfunction. Then yeah. they're using this on the penis, and they're actually getting uh, better erections. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's another large off off market use is Men's Health ED treating for um, increased blood flow for erectile dysfunction, also treating plaque buildup or even Peroni scar tissue disease, scar mm -hmm. tissue in the in the uh, penis as well. And then they're using public floor, women's health. There's uh, they're finding a lot of research for treating women's health for um, vaginal rejuvenation, um, mm. increasing blood flow and, mo and moisture in these areas to relieve some of the um, some of the effects of menopause or premenopause. Right. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're exactly correct. Um, mechanical transduction, it's a mechanical force of energy that's getting delivered into these cells. Um, what it's doing is it's it's remodeling these cells at a cellular level. Uh, going in and delivering a mechanical force of energy to get these cells awake and active again. Mm, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I didn't know about the, the vaginal rejuvenation. That's fantastic. I mean, you get all these guys ready and they're older and they're 70 years old, but the women, they need to perform also in that Absolutely. instance. Well, we didn't come necessarily come here to talk about erectile dysfunction, but it's an interesting topic when you're talking about it shock is, therapy. Is. There's a new research article in 2020 on osteoarthritis of the knee, and it blew yeah. my mind. Because yeah. you have you have the cartilage, then you have the subchondral uh, bone, which is right under the cartilage, and and you know with osteoarthritis, the bone starts to remodel, and you get like wobbly bone, and yeah. the the cartilage is degenerating. And what they found is that you get actually a regeneration of the cartilage, and that mm -hmm. funky bone starts to pack. In fact. That's this guy, sweet. ESWT, could accelerate the healing of meniscal tears even yeah. uh, in avascular regions that might contribute to osteoarthritis progression. ESWT promoted the healing of avascular te tears by stimulating the proliferation of meniscal cells and the upregulation of cartilage repair factors. I've always thought, right, I use this on osteoarthritis all the time at the knees. I mean, I had my knees... I mean, I was a competitive mountain biker, was deep in it, you know, just just racing, traveling and racing, sponsored the whole thing. And so I kind of I stopped skiing because of my knee and uh, I got yeah. the machine like you. We, 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 you know, the biggest advocates for this stuff are people yeah. that are have had their, their miracle, you know. So like, I, yeah. you know, I, I have a season ski pass now. I am skiing on a regular basis on on knees that, you know, have meniscus tears. You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, it is. There's a lot of research on showing uh, regeneration of ligaments, um, tendons, ligaments, even bone tissue for stress fractures as well. Um, increasing, uh, increasing the, the, the um, those areas decrease blood flow, but the collagen in certain areas for ligaments and tendons and helping help, uh, regenerate and heal them.
Mm -hmm. So it, it's, gosh, there's so many ways we can go with this right now. And it's such an exciting topic. Um, so the, 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 the thing that, because I've always, I've always used it for chronic, right? We're yeah. bringing in new blood vessels. We're breaking up scar tissue. We're breaking up adhesions. Uh, you talked about bones, you know, bones that are non-union, that are not, you know, coming together even after a year. They're finding with shockwave therapy, we're talking like 74 to 80 plus percent um, yeah. effective at, at helping these bones. Absolutely. It's incredible. Um, yeah. But now what about these, because you, you're talking, we're talking with, when we talk meniscus tears and what you're talking about, you're talking about acute injuries also. Correct. Yeah. So acute injuries are really what our, um, what we were aiming towards bringing into the market to the U S for acute injuries, um, and, and chronic injuries, it gets very great success as well. Um, uh, most people think that it, you know, if it's a chronic injury, that's the only thing you can treat, but you can always be proactive and treat acute injuries and alleviate it before it gets to that chronic phase. Um, most of our treatments are about two treatments a week for about three weeks, uh, anywhere from three to six treatments. And you can eliminate the, the, the pain and, and suffering of, of letting something get to that acute phase, being proactive mm -hmm. with. Okay. So, you know, and I think we're, you, we're jumping so much to the gun. I think we should stop and tell people what is shockwave therapy, but, um, how is it? I mean, because if, if you have a tear, you have a tear in a ligament, right? I'm usually using a high, high, you know, a laser in there. Um, yep. because laser is more regenerative, it seems like. But what you're telling me now is the acute injuries. You're, it's okay to go into a tear with that uh, sound wave. Yeah, and, and the, the idea is that you, for a fresh injury like that, a fresh tear, even a fracture, um, stress fracture in those areas, you just, you're just you starting out a little more conservatively of, of what we call a winding phase, where you're just moving over these areas slow and steady. And what you're doing is you're increasing this blood flow in there and getting blood, healthy blood, oxygenated blood moving in there. But at the same time, you're flushing out this inflammation that's in there that's causing that impingement of pressure and pain where healthy tissue should be. And you're eliminating the, the, the chance of scar tissue or in stress fracture case, osteocytes or osteoblasts forming, which are eliminating that bone uh, bone to start healing. Um, you're breaking up that that dysfunctional tissue getting out of the way and then healthy healthy blood will help generate that that tendon or ligament or, or bone tissue, whatever you're you're treating. But yeah, there's a, there's a little bit different um, applications to it, but it's uh, it's it is it's a it's a modality you can really go in and start at a at an early uh, injury within a couple of days. I had no idea. That's yeah. incredible. I need to talk to you more often. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Um, so well, I'm doing all the time too, so I'm always happy to share. Right on. So yeah. let's let's talk about um, you know maybe we can tell people out there what you know we're excited we're talking about this stuff. You know, for me it feels like almost I'm so excited about it, it feels like you know you you got a hammer in your hand everything looks like a nail you know you just okay what is it we can help it right um, yeah. and and it feels that way it's it's that good um, you yeah. know it's it's my desert island therapy you know I mean if you only get one this is it you know. Uh, all the time. Yeah. so, um, so, so what is it and how is this one? Because this is focused shockwave. Why don't you let us know what is focused shockwave? Yep. So I'll, uh, kind of give you just back, take a couple steps back, give you, a, uh, an overview. So, um, shockwave in general is a general term, almost like car. So you have focused shockwave and you have radial shockwave. Those are both underneath the shockwave umbrella. Um, radial shockwave delivers uh, all the energy at the surface level of the skin, and then it radiates out in a radiating fashion, covers all the tissue the same, healthy tissue the same way as it, uh, uh, it treats dysfunctional tissue. Mm -hmm. With focused shockwave, it comes to a precise point and precise depth in the tissue, and you can target just that dysfunctional, non-pliable fibrous tissue. Mm -hmm. And by doing that as well, it's a diagnostic therapy. So you can treat over healthy, hydrated tissue. The patient's not feeling anything. When you find that dysfunctional, non-pliable tissue, it gives them almost a dull, achy feeling or flares up that same path of pain they feel when their injury is bothering them. So that allows you to be very precise and, and very localized to that area. And then the patient actually knows that you're treating the right area instead of kind of just helping, you know, spraying and praying that you're hit. I, I love that. Right. It's, uh, it's not the AK-47. It's a sharpshooter. It's, and, yeah, it's a sniper rifle as opposed to a shotgun. Right, yeah. right. And the shotgun, we had that. We had the reps come and they would do the yeah. the radial shockwave. Yeah. And, and they're great too. They're just, 
different purposes. Yeah. I never bruise and I was bruising. Yeah. I'm like, what is this? I don't want to do this to my people. Yeah. It's a little different. It's, it's, um, it, it's really a, another modality too. You can't compare to the two of them because with the, with the radial, you're, they're great for large, uh, surface areas and must deep muscle bellies. They're really good for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, insertional points and over hardware, they are not good for fractures. Um, that's where the, the focus shockwave excels. You can go right over any kind of hardware plates, pins, screws, you can go right over any fractures and it excels in insertional points, smaller insertional points, uh, edge of the bone doesn't hurt as it's a lot more tolerable than any other shockwave out. Right. Like radial shockwave, you wouldn't want to go over the lungs, right? No. Focus. You can set it just the exact depth you want. You go right into the, you want to do a costosternal junction and help the ribs. You're good. Yep. You want I've to go awesome strains with it and gotten great success. Um, cause you can control that depth and the amount of energy that you're delivering to that, that uh, precise location. So just based off of the connect chain and the anatomy that, you know, you can be as, as direct at the treatment and therapy level that you need to be. Right. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. And I love that diagnostic quality. It's, uh, it's incredible. I mean, yeah. you know, you can take that thing as hard as you want. Just, okay, here it is on my forearm, go for it. And if there's no problem in there, you're not going to feel anything. Feeling. And then you, you move a little bit. Oh, there it is. It's yeah. incredible. Um, it is. I have a lot of, I have a lot of doctors too, uh, um, doctors of osteopath that use the machine and they'll actually be traveling in around portions of the back lumbar area, finding the flare up. And then they do, they'll do injections from there based off of that because they know exactly where the area is. So it's, oh. it's, it's honing in and you're, they're getting a, a better, um, a better outcome from that as well too. So there's just so many different applications, really. It's, it's, and, and going back to what you're saying with the, you know, being excited because you see it, you know, as it's a hammer and you got all these nails, you can figure it really is a creative modality. You can, if you think you can treat it, soft tissue injury, you generally can. I say, you know, everything from TMJ to plantar fasciitis, all soft tissue in between. Um, there's always ways you can start the treatments and acclimate people into these treatments. Right. I use it on the TMJ all the time. A large part of my practice is TMJ. I'm using it all the time. Now that, um, so you're going right into the joint then with the yeah, TMJ. Right in the joint. I have, and you actually can have people moving their jaw and activating it. I've had some people actually releasing from the inside when they're doing the treatments and get, and getting really good success from it. Um, so it's really what your comfort level is and your, your, obviously your scope of practice in those areas. Um, cause we work with everything from massage therapists all the way up to, um, uh, orthopedic surgeons. So everything in between, uh, chiropractic soft tissue specialists are our main customer. Um, and, and they're the ones that are being a lot more in, um, creative and inventive in their treatments and therapies and offering. Um, and then, uh, athletic teams were about 45. Um, about 45 pro teams and division one athletic programs, um, you know, all across the board, NFL, NBA, uh, MLB, NHL, and then, uh, large division one pro uh, programs. And they're using it for all different kinds of applications. They use them for even scanning players. If they say they're hurt and they don't want to practice, they'll scan them. And if they don't get a flare up or don't get a response, they tell them to go back in and practice because they know if they're going to find a spot and they're injured, it's going to flare up and they're going to get a response from them. Um, if they don't, then they just know they're kind of giving them BS. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Like yeah. a, like a European soccer player or something, right? Yeah. A B BS detector. They call them. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, they go through and scan them. If they don't get a flare up, get back in there. You can practice. <laughs> right. Right. That's incredible. Yeah. So yeah. the basic, the most basic, the, the my most ex basic explanation for people is sending sound waves into the body. Normal cells wave. Like if you were to throw a rock into water. You're seeing the ripples in the water. Normal cells are going to wave. They're going to compress and decompress, but they're just basically going to wave. Scar okay. tissue, or which we get a ton of because we, we eat diets that are, you know, we're constantly eating. We're not going into repair phase. We're high inflammation yeah. diets, etc. Even our meat is, you know, corn fed, which creates more omega-6s and it's more inflammatory than... You know, grass-fed beef that would be omega threes. I mean, it, we are not resolving our inflammation too well in this no, in America. Not at all. So it's we're getting nice. a lot of scar tissue, and um, one injury to one person that's highly inflamed might cause more scar tissue than the exact same injury to somebody who's has low inflammation, right? Absolutely. So then we come along and we um, we we do the shockwave therapy, and those that wave is now breaking up that scar tissue 
bringing new blood into the area, what's called angiogenesis. And then we're seeing collagen regeneration, like with the knee yeah. study. It's thicker, thicker cartilage and helping with the bone remodeling. 50% yeah. reduction in osteophytes. It's, it's incredible. I mean, how can you have something that's this regenerative without putting a needle, without cutting, without, I mean, it's like, it's, it's mind boggling. Yeah. It is. And, and, um, you know, to kind of feed off of what you're saying too, is a lot of people don't realize that, you know, your injuries, when you get an injury, your body naturally is going to start the, the healing process, which is, is generally going to be scar tissue. So if some people don't realize that scar tissue, they're going to have, they all have, everybody has scar tissue. If you're getting injuries, uh, it's just like you were saying the, the way your body processes it, uh, how, how, um, the size of it or the, the thickness of the scar tissue is depends on your diets and how you take care of your body as well. Um, mm -hmm. But we, we are finding a lot of times, uh, you know, you can be proactive and break that scar tissue up before it even forms. Um, and mm -hmm. any, any therapies or any surgery you get or any injections you get, you're always going to have some scar tissue forming. So a inv non-invasive way to treat these things without getting, without causing mo another injury or another issue is, is, you know, worth its weight in gold. That's why we're excited about all these different uh, avenues that we're going down from working with plastic surgeons, treating um, hypertrophic scars. They're starting to treat uh, right after their surgeries, treating these hypertrophic scars to mm. make soft, make them more pliable. They smooth out faster and the healing process starts quicker. Um, same thing with wound healing. We're getting, we're uh, working on getting, uh, Richard Wolf is working on getting the FDA clearance for um, wound healing because there it shows for diabetic ulcers is really a great indication of how wow. quickly it'll start, start to help heal these right on top wounds. of it yeah so they'll they'll put a sterile dressing on top of the the, the wound and then they'll actually use the therapy source over top of it with the gel and do it in a wanding fashion which is just same thing increasing blood flow in that area mm -hmm. and it'll help the healing process a lot quicker um the other thing too is uh they're using um we're, we're starting to work with some uh, big plastic surgeon um there's done a bunch of case studies on um, abstract and case studies on cellulite, um, and mm -hmm. uh, adipose tissue, breaking up little, uh, fat, fat cells to try to get it more crystallized to help process them using another biologic in there to help break it up and flush it. Um, and then the so like crystallized fat cells, is that what you're saying? Yeah. So they'll, they, yeah, so they're using, um, a biologic called quo, which they'll inject into these areas that helps separate these, these fat cells. And then they are able to go over there and start to, to treat over them and it helps to st start break them up, crystallize them. And then your body starts to flush them out, goes through your lymphatic tract and gets out, gets rid of them. And then after that, your body doesn't keep producing more fat cells. They just right. get larger. Mm -hmm. um, so they're, uh, they're finding all these different avenues and it's li we're literally just scratching the surface of some of these different new applications and different, um, different uses of them, uh, of shockwave and focus shockwave, especially. Yeah, I I think the 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 new thing with the dementia is interesting. Maybe it might be vasculogenic dementia. They were doing I think thirty minutes of treatment, like twice a week for six weeks or something like that. Yeah. Did you hear anything about that? Yeah, so um, I saw some research. There's um, there's a, a manufacturer of Shockwave um, that does a lot of research. A lot of the research that's online is is published through them, um, and they're doing it where. It is, uh, it's an actual focus shockwave as well. And they're using a, um, a halo to, to actually check the um, a CAT scan to find out where these dormant cells are and trying to stimulate the brain cells in those areas to get some, some fresh blood in there to get them actually active again. Um, and they're finding they're getting really good success with that as well. Um, in Europe, they're, they're a lot more creative and, uh, and ahead of our times here. So they're doing, uh, they're doing some, some amazing things over there, which is, is great for us because, you know, it's eventually going to get here. Um, and even, even certain types of cancer, they're starting to treat with it. Um, they're finding some certain types of cancer do not like healthy oxygenated blood. Um, so they're finding that certain types of cancer they do, they are able to treat with in most cases, you, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not recommended but they're doing research over there to find out what they can treat and what they can't treat with it. And we'll eventually start to see it over here. Interesting, right? Because I've always been told, be careful of cancer, but maybe that's just, it was the unknown. And so you guys just said, don't, don't do over cancer. Yeah, exactly. Like anything, you, you know, if you're not sure, just avoid it. It eliminates the process of going through, well, I didn't do anything but this treatment and now I have an issue. Um, but you're going to find a lot of things, a lot of, um, contraindications and stuff that we've thought for years 
um, were a problem are going to be actually a treatment now. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. What about like uh, if I had a uh, pregnant woman, could you use this on a pregnant woman? Absolutely. So uh, pregnancy is pretty much un considered uh, a treatment the same as if somebody had a pacemaker. So pacemaker you can use as well. So um, we were using the umbrella term of shockwave. Um, we really kind of coined the phrase myofascial acoustic compression therapy. Myofascial is all soft tissue, if uh, anybody doesn't know that offhand. Uh, but we call it acoustic compression therapy. It's sound wave therapy, pressure wave therapy. Those are all going to be the same. Anything that's creating an acoustic wave off of a mechanical force. And But, um, it's, so you, but what we're doing is focused as focused. opposed to just acoustic. Just, it's focused. It's focused, right. yes. So the focused acoustic wave is coming to a precise point. And you can treat um, women if they are pregnant. You're just not treating over the midsection, especially obviously over the, the stomach area, lower back. Uh, extremities cervically you can treat same with uh, um, patients if they have pacemakers so there's no thermal energy going into the body and there's no electricity going into the body um, even though the machine is using piezoelectric crystals which are small ceramic crystals they're all hand laid in the therapy source and then what they do is they solder all these crystals together and it electrically charges the crystals expand and when they expand they're so packed so tight that they bang together and when they do that there's this acoustic wave that comes up from the, in between them and it comes the ergonomic shape of the therapy source causes it to come to a precise smooth point and we're actually the only direct focus shockwave on the market every other focus shockwave comes off it reflects off the sides and comes back to another angle it's almost like a prism ours comes directly from the therapy source straight so it's a lot smoother of a sound wave and more consistent as well mm -hmm. he's talking about the the piezo wave it's the one i use after I went through yeah. a bunch of them and came to this one. Yeah. yeah, it's so German technology is very precise and it's very, very well, well manufactured. It's the most durable, um, focused, uh, durable shockwave in general on the market for sure. I, you know, I'm always excited about every person that comes in, but I'm, I really love the person that comes in with a uh, degenerated hip. You know, I've done a lot of uh, hip videos to help with the hip mobilization and things like that for on, on my you know, YouTube channel, etc. What now what I'm using is I'm using the deeper uh, therapy source, which is off label, I've used it on some people, and I'm getting deep in. So normally, you can get to, you know, if you use the, the, the focus, you can get three centimeters plus a little plus one centimeter more. So you're four centimeters in. And yeah. now we have the ability to go even deeper and go all the way into the joint or even into the joint capsule and um and ping pong the sound waves i mean do they you know because if, if i have somebody lying on my on their side and i go right in there uh dropping the leg off the side of the table i'm actually getting in the joint Open and it. helping with joint yeah. regeneration and preventing even um hip replacements correct yeah so the therapy source you do use um is is the, it actually is the deepest uh focus shockwave on the market uh the hand it's the hand piece the therapy source um and it's it's been in the u.s for several years on the veterinary side we're using it for the same machine different therapy sources are used to treat canine and equine and uh feline um and then with with the equine you have to actually get deeper they're larger larger tissue more muscle mm -hmm. so the therapy source penetrates deeper um and it it gets to dip uh much deeper depths to be able to get to this to, to the some of the harder to reach areas inside the hips so as things like that um but it, it does anything any angle you send the sound wave at just like you said you can have them on a the table uh have their leg over thrown over the table open the hip up and be able to get inside that hip um it, it really is a creative modality where you can even put them in a um, uh, passive range of motion do a treatment open up these uh, joints as well have them put a load on if you're treating a quad um, and bring the tissue to the surface and do a treatment as well in that area. Same right. thing with uh, patella tendonitis. You can get behind the patella and treat that. So if people have knee issues, it works very, very well for treating like patella tendonitis, Love it. lateral pecanitis, golfer's elbow, tennis elbow, yeah. Right. I've even had uh, where I've distracted the joint on a traction device, mm -hmm. open yeah. the joint up, and then go into the joint with that. I've done that with knees and with the hip. Absolutely. Yeah. So we have a lot of um, chiropractors as well that, that have decompression uh, tables, large like the X 9000s, and they'll do uh, treatments with decompression at the same time and getting amazing results with it. Um, same thing with uh, some of our sports teams. So a lot of our uh, sports teams, pro teams, 
the chiropractors have uh, have the, the modality in their offices as well, let alone in, in the facilities. And a lot of the chiropractors are finding that they treat some of these large 300 pound ath- athletes, they're treating their, um, their backs and breaking up some of these lesions. And then they give them the adjustments and the adjustments hold better with less resistance with the adjustment, less work for the, for the uh, therapist as well. Of course. I mean, you look at like a sacroiliac joint. I mean, I'm looking at these things on x-ray and I'm going, this thing is just about fused, right? And you've been going to that chiropractor, they've been adjusting it and then you get back, okay, a day later or three days later, oh, got to go to the chiropractor again. Boom, adjusting it, adjusting it, adjusting it. Now I'm going in and getting in there with the shockwave and now the adjustments are just... I mean, the, the so mobility is staying, right. It's yeah, not that cycle. Lot less work. Yeah, exactly. So it breaks the cycle. Cause that's the thing. If you're not doing something different, you're doing the same thing over again anyway. So breaking up these, the scar tissue or the lesions in these areas are going to help the adjustment, uh, and make it easier for, them, but it's going to help hold better. And it's going to reduce the chances of this, this scar tissue forming again, when you actually are, are trying to soften it and remodel it and get rid of it. Um, it, you know, there's, there are really so many exciting things for even being preventative or um, reactive with your treatments. So you can do a lot of preventative where you can just do upregulating blood flow, volumizing blood flow before workouts. Mm. Um, if you like yoga, uh, any kind of CrossFit, marathons, um, athletes. So you don't have a problem doing this before, before a big workout? No, not at all. Yeah. So um, a lot of our pro teams. So I live in Tampa, the Bucks, uh, their athletic trainer swears by it. Every day he treats some of these the same players every day before their their practices because it what it's doing is upregulating blood flow. It's increasing blood flow, so it's it's the same as if they warmed up for twenty minutes in that specific body part. Mm-hmm. So less chance of strains or, or sprains because you got increased blood flow feels looser instead of just going out there and just starting to put pressure on these tendons and the ligaments. Oh, it's beautiful. Now, yeah. it, it, let's say somebody has an injury though, um, and and you know you could for instance I've got. Uh, some guys that, well, I guess, you know, I've got a, a, some people that are competing on a, on a national level in gymnastics mm-hmm. that come in my office. And um, I, you know, a week before I was like, you know, we're not, we're not going to do a shockwave the week before. Is that, I don't know. Or do you, you have, you don't have a no, problem so you, you, No, not at all. So you can, um, one of the things you can do too, especially for athletes um, to their tolerance, generally we say two treatments a week. You want to give it a about two or three days in between the treatments for the, the tissue to start to help heal the healing process. The body's mm-hmm. going to naturally start to when you relieve it from pain um, and you start to break up some of this dysfunctional tissue, you allow the body to start that's nat- natural ca- cascade of healing effects. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you get a couple of days in between, the tissue starts to heal because you use a lot, in some cases you're causing micro trauma, which is healthy to the tissue. Um, but it's also getting the healing process started again, where in a lot of cases when there's no blood flow in the area that this the, the tissue just stays dormant and that's where these uh-huh. nagging uh-huh. so when you could just do some upper regulation uh blood flow on a you could do it on a daily basis or before mm-hmm. before any you know activity just moving slow and steady just wanding over these areas increasing blood flow uh you could do that pre and post workout even um Beautiful. but you'll find that a lot of times these the athletes um will find they'll actually be much better or get a better workout or uh if it's a run you know a, a better time because they've decreased that pressure pain but increased the blood flow so they were warmed up and loose when they got ready to incredible absolutely yeah i've been using it on my just to, just to because i the, my achilles are pretty good but i just been hitting them a little bit because i've been running some hills lately doing some sprints in the, yeah. in the mountains here in california and it's it's been incredible i mean i i would get a little hello how you doing for my achilles and i'm not getting it anymore it's phenomenal yeah but absolutely I'm, just just increasing blood flow but you know the biggest thing too is it helps reduce the ch- chance of buildup of lactic acids in the area uh and any kind of inflammation formed from pushing yourself and and getting you know getting to that next level if you're an athlete yeah i mean anything that's blocking energy blocking blood block you know if scar tissue in there i mean it's not good yeah. You know, no, no, so no. it's going to alter mechanics. It's going to increase injuries. So I want to yeah. tell you my, my big story. It was incredible. This woman calls me, she calls me from LA and she's like, Hey, I want to come see you. I have a uh, post-surgical scar tissue. I said, okay, I've worked a lot with that. Let me know. What do you got? So she had endometriosis and she gets, she gets a surgery to get rid of the endometriosis. And, um, six months later, she's in agony. She's on pain meds. She goes in and gets another surgery to get the scar tissue removed from the first surgery. Yeah. She does okay. 
A couple months later, starts getting in pain, starts popping the pills. Six months later, she gets another surgery. She ends up with 15 years. They, it would, they got to the point, John, where she would leave and they, they would say, oh, let's make your next appointment for the next six months. 30 wow. surgeries. Wow. And, and she's like, how much? I said, come for a month, you know, and get an Airbnb. She had a little fundraiser at her church and she comes here and I could only see her for like 12 days. And, but I, but I was ramping it up. I was having her take uh, fibrinolytic enzymes to just to start digesting all the fibrin that the scar tissue was releasing. I was doing massive amounts of pulses per day. She'd go home back to her, 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 uh, her hotel room and she would just pass out. And um, that was like four or five years ago. She's still 100%. That's from awesome. 30 yeah. surgeries. I mean, and this little chiropractor for, you know, whatever, a few thousand dollars gets her yeah. well. And that those doctors made t millions and millions. And no, yeah, nobody. Go ahead. I was just going to say, especially because they you're going to listen to what they tell you. If they tell you you got to keep getting these surgeries, you don't really know any better unless if you go to somebody like yourself that's thinking of a creative, different, non-surgical approach to things. And it, it really does. It has some amazing success stories across the board. That one's a great story. That really is oh. an amazing story. And I 100% believe it. Um, it really has changed people's lives of, uh, even after getting back surgery and still had these lesions in there and they just couldn't figure out what's going on and went in for another back surgery. And then, you know, they went to the right therapist that had uh, the piezo wave and was able to find that scar tissue, break it up. And all of a sudden the, this impingement's gone. Um, where they would have kept just going back for back surgeries. Right. And they don't really know. And it's, I mean, it's easier for a, you know, orthopedic surgeon to cut and then figure it out later. Um, then to try to prevent that scar tissue, they may be getting rid of something, but they're adding something at the same time. Right. Right. They are. They are. And I, yeah. I had, whereas this isn't, I had a, a guy like yourself also with a shoulder and it was impinged post-surgical. He came from the East coast. This is when, I mean, I don't know, I've had this thing for a while. So there, you know, now more people have it. And I, I recommend, I say, hey, go seek somebody, this guy in LA or this guy in New York yeah. or whatever. But he comes and I'm, I got the one, I'm working it, I'm working it, finding nothing, right? And all of a sudden he goes right there, right there, right there. And it was 45 seconds of, you know, feels like a, a sore Over. tooth or something like that, right? He's going, ah, oh, oh, oh. and then I take it off and he just goes, Oh my gosh, I haven't been able to do this. This is amazing. And he could just lift his arm and it was done. It yeah. was like, like that, you know. Shoulders are really a great indication if you have uh, post rotator cuff surgery. So even if you have some tears, uh, try the therapy first. I, um, I, I'm a firm believer of try it before you actually go into, under the knife and get, get mm. the surgeries. Try it. Um, at least give it the, 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 the go of a full protocol, maybe up to six treatments and see how you feel. Um, in most cases, you're going to, you're going to prevent from getting surgery, depending on the, how severe the tear is and what needs to be replaced. Um, but I highly suggest it, but even post-surgery for especially rotator cuff, my instance was I had slap tear surgery. Mm -hmm. Um, so the slap tear surgery just had bone spurs and it actually had, um, it, it rubbed so much that it actually caused, uh, a tear that, that it caused a, a cyst. So I had muscle atrophy, uh. um, the surgery went well, but I still never felt right. And I still didn't have the range of motion. Even when I laid down, I couldn't put my hand above my head and actually be able to touch the ground. Um, and it was like literally one treatment. Uh, I, I felt a significant difference. So if you get Incredible. frozen shoulder, which is a very common uh, after uh, rotator cuff surgery, uh, many people think the only thing you can do is go back in there and shave more and cut more. My family, my aunt had the rotator cuff surgery and she was getting ready to go back in again. I was like, let me give me, at least let me do one treatment. And one treatment was significant from a 45 degree angle above her head. And she's like, I don't have to get the surgery. I'm glad I didn't, you know, and so it can prevent a lot it's of nice. pain nice. and recovery. Absolutely. So uh, one other thing, I, I just a maybe I had a I had an interview with a guy named Rob English. He's a uh, hair researcher, right? It's all this guy does. And so he's big on the needling, the um, micro needling and the massage maybe some topical finasteride or whatever. But anyway, I've been Obviously, doing this stuff and I'm just like, I mean, my hairline's just phenomenal right now. Yeah, <laughs> my wife's like, I don't see that little bald spot anymore. So uh, it, it's been really cool. And um, yeah. and so I asked him, because a lot of this, you're getting, you're getting uh, fibrosis 
in the hair follicles, follicular mm -hmm. fibrosis, right? So that, my mm -hmm. gosh, I wonder about shockwave therapy for hair regrowth. Yeah. Is, is there, do you know if there's been anything out there on that? I haven't. Um, at that, that plastic surgery seminar I just went to this past weekend in Miami, the Miami Cosmetic Plastic Surgery, or Cosmetic Surgery and Aesthetic Seminar, um, Dr. Greg Shearnoff is a, a, a plastic surgeon in Indianapolis and in Santa Rosa, California. Um, right. He's wrote thousands of papers, tons of research, and he he's um, he's been doing a lot of creative uh, and, and inventive um, ways to use the piezo wave in conjunction with our stuff. But hair follicles is one of the things I believe that he's uh, starting to use with the topical exosomes as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, some people actually incorporate a uh, infrared light therapy, red light therapy in there mm -hmm. to kind of help stimulate as well. But I think, you know, what a lot of research is showing is just putting some kind of a topical on isn't enough. You need to, like you said, you need to stimulate this, the cells, and you need to push that into, into the, uh, into the pores, into the cells mm -hmm. to get uh, some, some actual growth um, and, and, and basically water, water the plants. You got to get something in there to, to get some, some, some growth in the area. You can't mm -hmm. just rub something on there and hope it works, you know? So um, they're finding a lot more uses and, and that wouldn't surprise me if they're starting to use this and, and, um, and uh, hair growth as well for regenerating hair growth. I would love to see some research on that. If, you know, if yeah, you call yeah. Wolf on the line, say, hey, let's do some research. I mean, yeah. it'd be interesting, right? You know. It would, absolutely, yeah. And, and, and there's ways of doing it. With this being a focused uh, shockwave, we mentioned, uh, you know, the using it over over the skull for dementia and different things. Mm -hmm. um, there's ways you can be up until, you know, a zero millimeter rate, right, the surface of the skin mm -hmm. up to, you know, five, 10 millimeters, just so you're getting um, underneath the, uh, you know, the, a couple, you know, the subdermal. So mm -hmm. you can really be as, as precise as you need to be to get to these follicles and kind of get some stimulation and get some, 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 uh, upregulation and then use these topicals that are on here. I, I think that they would be, um, a, a good treatment, but still at the same time, they're off label and we're, right. we're, right. I'm let's, sure we're going to see you soon. Let's yeah. get the research on there. You know, there was one Japanese study that Rob English mentioned where they, they did a massager on one side of the head. That's all they did. Yeah. And then they found on the other that that side of the head had more hair than the other side. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you gotta it. Yeah, absolutely. Like anything, I, I mean, it, it, you need to get some movement, just like a, a you know, a stagnant body, you got to get get movement to get blood flow moving around to feel better to get some growth going. Um, I'm a firm believer that but yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the things that I'm, I'm sure we'll be seeing as you know, like as well as all the other you know, the cellulite, the adipose tissues and the keloids, all that stuff that he's doing. Um, and wound healing is probably the big, the, the next, uh, the next clearance, FDA clearance that we should have soon, hopefully, uh, by the end of the year. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, yeah. That'd be really big for, for diabetic ulcers and, and open wounds, wound healing. Oh, I love it. It's a good non-invasive way. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I like to tell people, Hey, you, you know, you, you, you've got that old injury. I love working with like older like guys that were athletes and then they're 60 and they're like, ah, I can't be an athlete anymore. We yeah. can give them hope. You know, I got, Absolutely. I got some golfers that are in their seventies. that are just like, oh my gosh, I'm playing golf again. You know, my, that knee is doing better, et cetera. I, so I, I like to, no matter how bad it is, I think you can breathe some life into it with this shockwave Absolutely. therapy. And so, um, I'm stoked to talk to you. It's been wonderful. Um, anything else, any other incredible miracles you want to let us know about? I mean, we've kind of covered the whole body, but yeah, we've covered a lot. I, I really do, um, believe, you know, I'm a firm believer the the therapy is something that, um, if, if you want to eliminate pain and injuries, you can use it. And even if you have pain and injuries for years, chronic, like you were saying, where people think that they, um, have to change their quality of life and change their activities, give it a try. Um, you, you will be surprised, uh, the outcomes of it. But it's uh, it's something that can help you know help all across the genre of ages and races mm -hmm. of, of injuries, um, mm -hmm. chronic acute and and it really doesn't. It, you just gotta see a protocol through, um, allow the healing process to take place. Um, nothing is overnight. Nothing is one treatment and one 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 time fix. Uh, right. You know, um, but everybody's body responds differently. Everybody a creature of habit. They keep doing the same thing to injure themselves. So. Just depending on what your injury is, just be patient with it. But I, I believe a, most cases out there of acute and chronic injuries, we can we can help at least alleviate some uh, pain and give them an increased range of motion to get back to these activities that they haven't done. I agree. I agree. Thank yeah. you so much, man. Thanks for hanging out with us today. And My pleasure. Uh, Thank you. For you. Let's help people. Right on. Absolutely. Love it. 
<laughs> so thank you all for tuning in. It's been a great talk. I want to give you all some hope. That's what I like to do on I, on the videos, the rehab videos. I give you hope. I give. I put the healthcare in your hands. But when you need to put it in somebody else's hands, shockwave therapy is phenomenal. Thanks for tuning in here to Health and Care. I'm Dr. Adam Fields, chiropractor. Keep taking care of yourself. Bye-bye.